So the Apple WWDC 2022 keynote has concluded. Some surprises, but also some disappointments. I'm going to start on the software side with iOS 16, which you get the beta, or at least the public beta that I'll be participating in, in July. So next month for that, we're going to have it on a variety of different devices. I think we're going to put it on an iPhone 10 as well as a 10s and see what we have going on there. I like some of the changes they made with messages. That's cool, you know, being able to edit and delete messages that you sent in error. That's fine. I like the new lock screen stuff. Hopefully that's a precursor to an always-on display and some of the optimizations that they showed there will also be included in an always-on display come the fall with the iPhone 14. That'll be something to watch for for sure. The animation stuff is fine. I'm sure MIUI would like a word about that that planet animation stuff, even though MIUI is jacked enough design elements from iOS uh, iOS just in general over the last few years that they really have no <laughs> no leg to stand on there. But it was still interesting to see something that, you know, kind of the lock screen integration that they have as well. The one disappointment, the big disappointment I had from iOS 16 was realizing that iPhone 7 and 7 Plus will not be supported. I don't know if the Plus, I don't know why there would be a difference there if the iPhone 7 Plus is supported or not. But the iPhone 7 is not included with iOS 16, which absolutely is a disappointment. That The next logical kind of drop-off would have been the iPhone 6S. I was not expecting that to be supported with iOS 16, but I was expecting the 7 and 7 Plus to make it another year. That puts the 8 and the 8 Plus and the iPhone 10, the original, on the chopping block for iOS 17, which is definitely disappointing. We've given Apple a ton of praise for supporting these devices well into the future. You had 7 years of support, 6 and 7 years of support, but still, I, those are very capable devices. Everybody still, you can use your iPhone 7. You have an iPhone 7, it works fine. Really no issues on iOS 15. A little bit of slowdown here and there, but that's to be expected for a device that came out, what, 2016, 20, yeah, 2016 at this point. So that's not completely out of the question when it comes to iOS. But you really wanted to see that extra year of support and them to keep those legacy devices around longer it reduces the value of the iPhone 8, reduces the value of the iPhone 10. We'll see going forward. Maybe they skip a year and don't drop any devices for iOS 17. But if they keep with that, then they're kind of cutting off a year of support. And that certainly is something to take into account. You're buying one secondhand. You're buying one off of Amazon Renew. Just know that you're kind of getting one year less of support than you typically would have expected. M2, worst kept secret on the planet. Got the new MacBook Air. A little disappointing. It, perfectly capable device. I don't even mind the price. $1,199, when you look at what you get on the PC side compared to the power per, per performance, the battery life, the screens, the display, just the overall build quality. If you are an editor, if you are somebody that does sound stuff, you are somebody that does illustration stuff, then you know the value of the Apple devices. If you're not, then you're not. Get a PC. It's perfectly fine. There are laptops on the PC side that are just as capable just as powerful, that are cheaper, they won't run as well, they won't be supported as long, and they won't get the battery efficiency that the Apples do, but they're cheaper. So you know, if you need those features, if you need that functionality, then you know. If you don't, then you don't have to pay the Apple premium, but if you do, you do get your money's worth. You know, they don't get a pat on the back for giving you these things, the machining, the engineering, the support, and all the rest of it, because they charge you for it, right? So you're getting what you paid for, but it still is nice to be able to, in 2022, get something that you paid for. Because so often, when around the rest of the world, especially when you're talking about tech, you don't get what you pay for, and you're still paying a heck of a lot of money. So, if you're a video editor, if you're an artist, an illustrator, you know the capabilities of the M2 chip. You understand it. You saw it with M1. And you know that the $1,200 base price, which is quite nice for a consumer laptop that's going to have that support, and the quality and the build quality and all the rest of it, MagSafe is back. Fast charging, 67 watt fast charging, which I think is quite interesting on that. They also updated the MacBook Pro 13 inch. Wasn't expecting that. So that gets the more capable M2 chip, but the design there stays the same. I would have liked to have seen on the MacBook Air the coloring to kind of match the iMac, like the original iBooks matched the original iMacs with coloring. Would have been nice to have seen the same colors there. They went kind of with the iPhone Pro, more boring colors there, but that's fine. That's a small thing. But I would have liked to have seen that be the consumer level fun laptop. So that's fine. And some of the things that I was surprised by and a little disappointed by not getting was no Mac Mini M2, which I thought they would have absolutely refreshed that. Incredibly popular device for them. Nice price, 
that's an entry price. If you already have a monitor, if you already have a keyboard, if you already have a mouse, you can set yourself up seven, six, seven, eight hundred bucks, depending on your configuration and your storage. That's a really comparable, uh, competent video editor. That's something that you could sit there and absolutely use for a lot of things. If you don't need gaming, if you don't need some of the extras that PC provides, that's a really nice machine for a really nice price. So I was shocked that that didn't get an M2 processor refresh. Also surprised that the iMac did. That came out in April of last year. No refresh there. No M2. And it's not like they really needed a, de a design refresh. Maybe the M2 requires or they're bulking them up a little bit to come out with a 27-inch iMac refresh. But I definitely would have liked, just like they slapped the M2 in the MacBook Pro 13-inch, they could have done the same. They just swap out the M1, put in a Mac, uh, M2 board in there, and been able to refresh the iMacs for 2022. So that was a bit curious. I don't know if they're going to do that later in the year, if there's a shortage, if they're worried about chips, if they're worried about getting the parts needed for that. So maybe that's why they held off there. So I'm going to hold off again on hold, getting an iMac. Certainly going to hold off on getting a Mac Mini until it gets an M2 refresh. There were other things with the Watch OS. So your Apple Watch 3 is the one that drops off this year. If you have a Series 4 and better, you're okay. There's some interesting things with Watch OS there. If you're into fitness and all the sleep tracking and all the rest of the stuff there. But overall, I'm just, I'm just checking to make sure I didn't forget anything that I really wanted to talk about. Now we said MagSafe headphone jack on the MacBook Air, which is quite nice. Hopefully, they recognize the... Especially if you're working with sound. If you're working with video, <laughs> you need it on that. At the very least, it'll be nice if they bring back some headphone jacks with the iPads now that they have, you know, capabilities that can do video editing and iPhones even stuff, you know, for monitors even. You, I do a lot of my videos on my iPhone 13. It'd be nice to have a headphone jack that gives you external microphone support. I have one here hooked up, but it'd be nice if you're doing something outside with it, you want to hook up external, it's a lot of different things that you could want and want a headphone jack back for. So hopefully, 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 the fact that they're keeping it on the MacBook Air, that they're bringing out products, new products in 2022 with headphone jacks, that we start creeping back the other way and get headphone jacks. But let me know which product you're most excited about down below in the comments section. If you're disappointed, listen, I'm really, the big, the big takeaway for me is that iOS 16 is not coming to the iPhone 7. Thought it was premature. A lot of people still out there probably using and loving their iPhone 7. If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time, have that Steve Lucious day.